Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new hello and welcome my name is Megan and welcome to my first week of workouts video of 2023 I'm so excited I am gonna try to do these monthly I know how much these help you guys motivate you guys and inspire you guys to change up your routine or stick with a routine and I really just want to do that for you and if you're looking to get into fitness in the new year remember that you don't have to start with five days you don't have to start with a million exercises and you don't have to start with super heavy weight you just have to start and it's okay to kind of take what I'm doing and scale it down to a more beginner level if you guys need any help with that if you guys need any support figuring out how do I turn a barbell squat into a more beginner movement feel free to comment below and I can definitely try to help you guys out or feel free to DM me and I am doing one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as personalized program I'd love to help as many of you guys as possible in this new year and just really grow my clientele and really help you guys on a full-scale basis so if this video feels overwhelming if your fitness journey feels overwhelming and you feel like you just need someone to guide you through it there's no shame in that I was in that space and I had someone guide me through it and I couldn't be more grateful for where it's put me. So feel free to apply for one-on-one -on -one coaching or personalized program. I would love to help you create something custom to you and your lifestyle. In terms of my routine right now, I don't really have any key focus because I will be kind of bouncing around the next few months with traveling and stuff. So I don't have time to really have a full strict routine in the way that I typically do, which is okay. And I want to tell you guys that's okay too. If you're someone that's more on the go, someone with different schedules, or just it's hard for you to find a routine that sticks, it's okay to switch things around. Just have a solid base and try to keep your core movements in there and you'll be totally fine but I want to take you guys through today's week of workouts I switched gyms I'm in a new gym in a new environment I'm very excited but without further ado let's just get into it we are going to start off this week of workout strong with a leg day I have not barbell squatted you guys in months you guys probably have noticed that I don't think I barbell squatted since my second week of workouts video which is crazy but I decided that I wanted to add it kind of back into my routine so that's what today is going to be focused on it's going to be a quad focused leg day Let's just get into it and get into Monday's workout. To begin, we're going to start off with our barbell squats, like I mentioned before. But before doing any compound movement, remember that we want to ease our way into them. Don't just throw on the weight and start doing your working sets. Make sure to do proper mobility and warming up and then do warm up sets prior to getting into your working weight. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just using the barbell, practicing my form, making sure everything feels nice and loose. If I have any mobility things that I want to sort out or just don't feel warm yet, I go through a mobility sequence again. So remember, it's no rush to get into your working weight and you don't count warm-up sets as your working set so if we're doing a three by five this is my first set. The warm-ups with the bar don't count as your working sets. So now that we're getting into the working sets, a key consideration that you want to do is align the bar on your traps. If you're doing high bar, you want to make sure to brace your core and make sure you're fully tight throughout and then try to draw a straight line with the barbell, meaning you want to go up and down with the barbell, not moving your torso too much. Ensure to keep your body tight throughout each movement and think about squatting down, hitting depth, and then pushing back up like you were leg pressing. Next, we're going to be going into a bulgarian split squat drop set as if they couldn't get worse as they were I think this is great if you're looking to add some challenge to your Bulgarian split squats but you don't really feel like upping the weight especially after something like a barbell squat if you go heavier on that and you just feel a little fatigued don't feel like you have to grab the heaviest dumbbell in the room and do these with poor form it's better to do these under nice control and do something like a drop set so here I'm doing eight weighted Bulgarian split squats and then we're going into eight body weight Bulgarian split squats and the benefit of a drop set is that you can still challenge the body but you don't have to put it under a lot of load and it's still just a nice way to progressively overload again if you're not looking to increase the weight yet then we're going to be moving into a B stance RDL I could not recommend this more I think as many unilateral movements as you can put into your routine the better so for these the key considerations with form is you want to align your non-working leg the one that's in the back here with the heel of your working leg this is going to give you the right leverage so that it's not a split squat stance but instead it's just a nice staggered stance to give you that full range of motion and you can keep your heel up on that non-working leg to get that full range of motion in terms of the working leg you want to have the weight on the side of the working leg aim to hinge back at your hips as if you're closing a car door and then think about bringing your hips up to full hip extension as if you're doing a hip thrust at the top of this movement and I think those are my two top tips for getting that form down next up we're going into some quad extensions I've been
been liking to do these at a lower weight and higher rep range so I'm aiming for four sets of here of anywhere from 12 to 15 reps just depending on the weight you're using and your fatigue from that day a key consideration with these is just making sure that you get to full extension at the top aiming to keep it controlled not only when you're bringing it up but also when you're bringing it down and these are a great burner for the end of your workout and then I also did calf raises but the machine was right by the door of the gym so I didn't want to be rude and have my camera in the way but make sure that you can throw those in hello and happy Tuesday today's workout is going to be a push day push day is going to be chest shoulder and tricep muscle focus you guys will see my push day movements don't really change from week of workout to week of workout once I found what worked for me with my upper body I kind of like to keep it pretty similar so if you notice it's kind of similar that is why but remember that you guys are free to make variations and changes as you see fit so for example if I'm doing a flat dumbbell press and you prefer incline do the incline don't feel like you have to do the exact same thing that I'm doing do what you enjoy and find best for you but let's just go ahead and get into the workout to start off this workout day we're gonna start off with some flat dumbbell chest pressing again you guys can do incline if that's what you prefer you could even do bench press if you prefer that as well but here I'm just lowering into the bench on a flat bench here you can have a slight arch in your back and your key goal here is to bring down the dumbbells to about chest height and then push back up and you can have your elbows angled in a bit at like a 35 to 45 degree angle so you don't have to have them flared straight out from your shoulder joint it's a lot more comfortable this way and pick a nice challenging weight this is your first movement of the day so you want to pick something that is going to provide a nice amount of challenge and fatigue the pressing movements come first because they are a little bit more fatiguing and you want to make sure you're doing them when you're nice and warmed up so now we're moving into a shoulder press the same thing goes with this you want to actually bring your shoulders into about a 45 degree angle to protect the shoulder joints hopefully you guys can kind of see that I'm doing that here but it's definitely a little bit of a funky angle and again pick a challenging weight so that the last two reps feel very fatiguing then we're going to be moving into lateral raises. My gym has this fancy dancy machine, but if you don't have this, that is a-okay. You can still do lateral raises just with traditional dumbbells. You could even do them on the cable machine, whatever is the most suited for you. But with these, again, I wanted to do something a little bit more high rep. I feel like I feel the burn and the muscle contraction more when I do higher reps. Also, these are harder to increase the weight that you're using. So a good way to challenge yourself is doing things like higher reps or isometric holds or supersets with these movements to still give them a nice amount of rigor and Challenge. Next, we're going to move into a seated cable fly. This is an example of how a lot of gyms have this machine. That's why I wanted to use it this time to show you guys. This keeps you nice and controlled. All you're focusing on is flying out. And I like to think about bringing my arms in as if you're going to be giving someone a hug and then letting them fully come out. Aim to get that full range of motion, the full stretch. And again, don't just control the pushing part, also control the part where you're bringing your arms back. And if you guys don't have this machine or if it's taken, you guys can also do this on a cable machine or you could also do this laying flat with dumbbells. Next, we're going into our final movement of the day, which is going to target our triceps. Here, I'm doing a single arm tricep push down. Again, unilateral work is super great if you notice any deficiencies between right to left. I noticed my left arm is a lot less strong than my right, so I wanted to do single arm tricep push downs here. So what you're gonna do is make sure that you try to keep your elbow fixated at your side Side, and then you're just pushing down getting to full tricep extension at the bottom hello happy Wednesday today we are going to be doing a glute focused leg day I feel like I finally got the right combo of movements for me to figure out how to make this leg day perfect target all areas of the glutes as well as finding the movements that are best for me to progressively overload I highly recommend you guys watch my video all about building the glutes which I'll pop on the screen right now as that will go over the different exercises the different muscles in the glutes and how to target them in the different positions so if you feel like you need a little bit more guidance and refreshers on that I would definitely watch that but I'll I'll give you guys the key pointers of the movements that I'm doing today right now so let's get into today's glute focus leg day starting off strong we're gonna go for some heavy loaded glute biased RDLs I'm doing these with the barbell if you feel more comfortable with dumbbells that's totally fine but here the key consideration that you want to do when you're doing a glute biased RDL is make sure that you're pushing your hips back and then also having a bit more bend at the knee the key difference between a hamstring bias and a glute bias is going to be the amount of knee bend adding a bit more knee bend is going to allow for a little bit better alignment with the glute muscle fibers and give that a little bit more stretch there so that's why I'm doing that as far as your stance you just want to be about shoulder width apart make sure your toes are pointed forwards they don't need to be pointed outwards here it's actually better for them to be pointed forwards here's a side view of the movement I feel like sometimes that can be helpful as well for you guys to see and understand the hip hinge so what you want to do is as the barbell is descending you want to push your hips backwards as if you're closing a car door behind you that's my favorite analogy to give and then what you want to do once you get to the bottom of the movement and are coming up think about the top of a hip 
thrust and how you thrust forward. You want to thrust forward at the top of this movement, just a full hip extension to make sure that you're getting the full value of the movement, which is the full range of motion. Obviously you want to control the eccentric, so you want to control the way down, but also control the way up as well. Now we're going to be moving into a superset that is absolutely killer, but super nice for the glute muscles. And again, this is a great way for you to challenge your muscles and do some more unilateral work. So we're starting off with eight barbell B stance hip thrusts. Then you're going to switch legs like I'm doing here. In terms of B stance hip thrust form, what you want to focus on is that you're going to have the working leg is going to be the flat foot and the non-working leg is just going to be propped up on the heel to allow for you to have stability, but you don't have to be driving through that leg. And then you're going to treat it like a normal hip thrust. So you're just going to be scooping up and down like a typical hip thrust, keep your chin tucked and your core tight. Then you're going to go into cast glute bridges right after that. So this is going to be a shortened range of motion. You're only going to be doing like the top third motion of a hip thrust. And then after that, you want to go into a hold for as long as possible clearly I was not holding on very long for this one but as long as you can try to hold at the top and then come down now we're going to be moving into some back extensions and if you feel ready then you can hold a weight if you don't then you can just do these body weight and they're still going to be great for you the key consideration here is also focusing on that top one half to one third range of motion and what you want to be doing is pushing into the pad and thinking about doing a hip thrust in that same way getting to full back extension so you want to become a straight line and in order to target Target the glutes more effectively you do want to kind of round your upper back which means that you can hold the weight further out from you think about like throwing up how you would just kind of get into that rounded upper back position and then have a slight bend at the knee and your toes pointed outwards to allow more emphasis on the glutes and what I like to do is after the weighted ones go into five body weight nicer controlled ones then we're gonna be moving into step ups or I guess you can call these touchdowns in the way that I perform them I personally like to hold on to something and there's no shame in that it's better to have stability and have a better range of motion motion and overall control of the movement than to just be flailing all over the place. If you're holding a weight, do it on the side of the working leg and then think about leaning your torso more forward to feel it more in your glute and you just want to lightly tap your back foot onto the floor to make sure that you're getting the adequate range of motion. And then to finish off our glute days, we always want to finish with a kickback variation. I'm doing a glute med kickback here. So what you want to do is put the ankle attachment around your ankle, load up and then slightly turn your foot outwards to about a 45 degree angle and then you want to kick backwards and outwards at a 45 degree angle this is going to align the muscle fibers to really hit that glute medius you don't need to do the crissy crossy over with your legs or anything fancy it's literally this straightforward it's definitely going to feel funky at first it takes my clients a little bit of time to get this down but once they do they notice great results with it and for these i like to do higher rep ranges and again no shame in holding on if you need a little bit of added stability that's preferred over not having a good amount of stability hello and how Happy Friday. Today is going to be a pull day sleigh. Love to save these for the end of my workout week. And I've actually added a deadlift to this day so that I could add squat earlier in the week. So I'm deadlifting on pull days now, which is what I used to do. And I really enjoy it because it's just one full compound movement and then the rest is mainly like back and bicep accessory. I shifted to four days of the week and I found that that has been a little bit better for me lately. So let's just get into this pull day to finish off the week. To start off this pull day, we are going to start off with our biggest compound movement which in this case is going to be sumo deadlifts here I'm doing my top set so a top set is going to be one set of a certain weight that you're performing for a certain amount of reps typically higher than the sets that you're gonna do following so this is my top set it's my working highest weight of the day and the key considerations for a sumo deadlift are you want to ensure that you're pulling the slack out of the bar for each rep keeping your core nice and braced. think about pulling straight up and also make sure that your hips aren't shooting up before everything else is you want it to be a nice fluid motion with with your entire body then here I am going into my working sets you want to have that nice wide stance with your toes slightly outwards and you want to be gripping the bar inside if you guys want more advice on sumo deadlifts I have a full video dedicated to the form dedicated to the setup that I think could be very beneficial this side view I think is always beneficial for clients to be able to see themselves from the side this is where you can see your hip height try to keep it maintained and you'll notice if your hips are shooting up and you want to make sure that you get to that full hip extension at the top before coming down we're going to be going into a superset this is something new for me and I actually really enjoyed it so to start off we are going into some inverted rows or Australian pull-ups so you can take a barbell put it on a nice height for you and then do a pull-up this way if you prefer to do assisted pull-ups or normal pull-ups instead of this you can absolutely do that here I'm just balancing with my heels and then pulling up body weight these are a lot harder than they look and a great variation for people working to get to a pull-up then straight after that we're gonna move into these gorilla rows which are definitely new for me but I really am liking them they've definitely been really trendy on on TikTok and a lot of people have been enjoying 
trying them. A nice component of these is going to be the core stability as you're doing them. Try not to twist and turn your torso. It's okay to choose a lighter weight and just have more control over it than to have too heavy of a weight and not be able to control it properly. So you want to have your legs at a sumo stance and then your arms are going to be on the inside of your body and you're going to be holding one dumbbell while pulling the other one up and make sure to think about keeping your elbows nice and tucked to your body. Then we're going to be going into face pulls which are going to target our rear delts. If you don't want to do face pulls you could also do rear delt flies using the same machine that we used earlier in the week for cable flies or you could also do them on the cable machines. So you have a lot of options for hitting the rear delts. You can also even hit them with dumbbells. I prefer face pulls so what you want to think about is pulling to your eye line or your forehead. I personally like to perform these when I'm seated because sometimes I notice my lower body starts rocking or taking over and I think that this back angle is going to be helpful for a lot of people to see where the rope should be coming. So it should be coming directly towards your eye line slash forehead area and when I say pull out to create 45 to 90 degree angles look at where my arms are going. So I'm pulling out directly out from my shoulder and creating nice angles with my arms and in terms of how you're holding the rope see how I'm holding it with my thumbs facing me if I were to point to myself that's how I would do it so that's a great way to know how to set it up. Next we're going to be going into lat pull downs. I've been loving having these in my routine. They're going to be a staple for every pull day and a big thing that I like to do with lat pull downs is do higher sets and higher reps and really challenge myself throughout the movement. So we're doing these at a higher volume of 5 by 12 but you still want to try to challenge yourself as much as you can with the weight that you are using. At this gym they have a lot of fun grips so this is more of an underhand mag grip but you can absolutely just use the traditional lat pull down bar as that is going to be great. The only reason that I chose this underhand grip instead is because we already did a pull up variation earlier with the inverted row that was overhand so I wanted to do something underhand as well. And here's a front view. I feel like sometimes it's helpful to be able to see where you should be pulling. You should be pulling down kind of bringing your chest a little bit backwards to allow for the bar to come down to your chest and think about tucking your elbows into your back pockets and bringing them backwards to really align those lats. Now to finish off we are doing a killer bicep circuit. So what you want to do is with the non-working arm you're going to have it in an isometric hold so it actually is going to be working and then with the working arm you're going to do traditional bicep curls as you see me doing here. The key emphasis of this is to hold an isometric hold in the other arm while doing a normal curl with the working arm and both arms are going to be feeling the burn. Again a great way to add variety and add a little bit of challenge without having to up the weight because again bicep curls are another movement where it just might take you a little bit more time to increase the weight that you're using. I really like this variation. You can also just do traditional curls. You can do seated curls, preacher curls, rope curls. Literally the possibilities are endless with biceps so do whatever you have available to you and is interesting to you but this is something to just spice it up for me and add a little bit more challenge. That is going to conclude today's video. I hope that it was helpful and I hope you guys loved it. As I said I'm going to aim to try to film one week of workouts for every single month so that you guys have a variety to choose from and I know how much they help you guys or motivate you guys or just give you guys great tips in terms of what to do exercise wise. And like I always mention in all my videos I am now doing one-on-one -on -one coaching and personalized programs. Just hit me up. I'll have the link to apply down below and it's always in the link in my coaching Instagram bio. And also be sure to follow my Instagram where I post workout content all the time as well as just some of my life. And if you guys ever need any advice with form or anything or you just want me to take a peek at it, don't be shy to reach out and DM me. A lot of you guys have and it's been super nice to meet you guys and connect with you guys and also see you guys caring about your form because I think that's so important. And thank you guys so much for the love and support on these always. It means the world. I love you guys and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! Should